Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another magical episode of the Why We Disney podcast. I know I'm excited because we are talking about something super important for you to know in the Disney community right now, which is Disney Genie Plus, right? Plus, we already did an episode on Disney Genie, but here is that plus, that extra information for you all. And let's go ahead and get started with today's episode. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to a brand new episode of the Why We Disney podcast. My name is Casey, and as always, I'm joined with my beautiful and stunning co-host, Kara. Hi, guys. (laughs) And today we are going to talk about Genie Plus. Now that Kara and I have both experienced it firsthand, we want to give you our tips and tricks. And I want to point out, too, that we did an episode previously on all of the things, right? Like the free Disney Genie. And then we talked about Genie Plus. We talked about the cost, all of the factors that go into that. We talked about the additional ride costs that you have to pay that's not included in Genie Plus. So many things. And we want to, we don't want to overlap that episode too much. So if you haven't heard that episode and you're listening to this one first and you kind of need like a background, go back and listen to episode 48 of the Why We Disney podcast. It's our Disney genie episode and we discuss it through and through but so we are going to have to just recap it a little bit like I said we're not going to try to overcap overlap it too much but Kara do you mind just recapping like what is genie plus which is the paid service right not the free Disney genie or whatever let's just kind of recap basics Yeah, I think especially for people that are getting into the Disney community, especially our first time um, travelers or people that haven't been there or even five to 10 years, they're like, where's fast pass or they're like, I have to pay for this. Yes. Okay. So Disney genie plus always look for that plus now in this episode is the replacement of what used to be the old fast pass. And I don't know about you, Casey. I just want to give a moment of silence. Yes. Moment of silence for dear old Fast Pass. Uh, um, and if you don't know what Fast Pass was, it allowed you to skip the line, which is right. now what GD Plus is. It allows you to skip the line for most attractions in the park, um, but it does not include some of those heavy hitters, as we know, like Flight of Passage, Mine Train, Frozen Ever After, Rise of the Resistance, so on and so forth. And right. um, if you wish, You can pay this additional price. Yes, Disney's trying to get their money back. You can pay this additional price to skip the line. And then on top of that, you also have those lightning lanes that range from nine to 15. And I do want to mention that it was advertised nine to 15 or nine to 20. And we're going to get into that later in the episode, but that's what it's advertised as, right? And uh, what else? So you can purchase Disney Genie Plus um, for $15 per person per day at Walt Disney World or $20 per person per day over at the West Coast of Disneyland when you book your vacation or the morning that you go into the park. I don't know about you, Casey, but like, I hope people are writing this down. (laughs) It is so much. It's so much to think about. And that is not including the price of your ticket, too. So not only do you have to just pay to scan in and be there, this is an additional cost on top of that. So a lot of people think, surely if I buy a ticket for 2022, Genie Plus includes that because Fast Passes used to be included in your general admission ticket. Yep. Not anymore. Sorry about it, people. (laughs) This is that extra dough. But it is similar to the fast pass system where you reserve what is a one hour window. Well, you will then scan into the attraction of your choosing. Now with the new Disney genie, this is different from our fast pass. So my, my fast passers listen up. You can only make one selection at a time. Then once you scan into that attraction or that ride, you can reserve another one. Now, keep in mind that their return time for these retractions, retractions, attractions could be, um, you know, hours away. So you might have to take some time to relax, get a snack, um, maybe get in the regular standby line for something else until your Disney genie lightning lane, uh, that reservation becomes available. And um, yeah, that is just the, the breakdown. And 
it, it's a lot. And I, I know like I'm, I'm here looking at a script and I just want to be very transparent to our listeners and to our watchers that, you know, we're here looking at a script and I'm saying these things out loud. And I'm like, I couldn't imagine being a first time Disney goer in 2022. I really couldn't. There's so much lingo. There's so much vocabulary, like, wow. Yeah. Absolutely. And I feel like we're not going to, we're certainly not going to lie to you ever on the Why We Disney podcast, but we are not going to say that this system is easy because it's not. It's complicated and it's odd and it's something that we're completely not used to. But I am very grateful after experiencing it. I'm like, I, okay, like I get it now. It's, I'm a visual learner and I have to actually physically do it with my hands to fully get it. And it is something that I do understand now. So I hate to tell like you first time goers, but like sometimes it just takes you putting your hands on it and doing it through the app. And you're like day two, you're like, oh, I got this, you know, or even I became very overwhelmed. Yeah, that too, that too. I did all my research and I was like, good. I know it. I watched everyone's videos. I was like, I know exactly what the app looks like. No, I didn't. (laughs) Um, So, you know, buckle up if you're along with us on this ride, because you are going to understand Disney Genie in no time. We are going to take a short ad break so we can give you the rest of the information and we'll be right back. All right, everyone, it is time to share our tips and tricks. So Uh, Something that's really cool is that I've actually tried Genie Plus in Disney World and Kara has actually done it now in Disney land. So we finally get both of the perspectives on one episode. And I just think that's so incredible. Kara, your trip, like, was it as magical as you thought it would be? I know I'm a little off script here, but I have to know. No, it's okay. It was as happy as I thought it would be with the happiest place on earth. And um, I want to go back. I love it. I, it it was great. Don't worry. Don't get me wrong. I love my home. I'm excited to take my welcome home trip as a new DC member, but Disneyland, it was, it was cool to be on the West coast. Mm. Gosh, I feel like we, I I feel like we just need to have a whole Disneyland episode just about your trip individually. Absolutely. I'm I'm hearing a a spinoff episode and you know, what was crazy is I think it was like Christmas morning when I announced the Disneyland trip to my mom and I was like, we're going blah, blah, blah. And then I, I had the realization like over breakfast, I was like, I'm going to use Disney genie the, for the first time in Disneyland, <laughs> which like as an East coast native, and that's your home park. That's where you go. Like right. I was like, okay, well, I'm good. I, I know what fast passes, blah, 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 fast passes. Oh, I know what lightning lanes I'm going to get. And then everything changed. And I was like, oh no. <laughs> It is so much. It's so much. So we don't want you guys to go to Disney World and obviously be lost on your trip or Disneyland as well. Like you need to have a plan. And I think Kara and I have said this from beginning. It's very smart to have a plan, especially if you're using Genie Plus, right? Absolutely. And you used it first a couple months ago, weeks ago. Where was I? When was I there? I was mid to January. So like maybe a month ago. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Ready? I'm going to, I'm going to start with just a few of mine. Go ahead. Don't hate me people. So listen, I, I did not want to like Genie Plus. I really didn't, but I have to just say firsthand, it made our trip. This trip, it was just my husband and I, so it was super easy to navigate just two people. And, you know, we didn't have this whole party full of people that I had to conversate with. Like, I, it was just the two of us. And we had such an incredible, relaxing trip. And I will... I will give Genie Plus credit for this. I really will. So there's a lot of thoughts that I have. But one of the ones is for Daniel and I, it was 100% worth it. 100% worth it for us. We did three parks, no park hopping, which by the way, shocking for me. Yes. I didn't park hop. Like what? Anyway, (laughs) I know Kara's clapping for me right now. If you're watching on YouTube, I'm very proud of myself. Okay. So one of the like smart strategies that I hear people talk about all the time is that, hey, may, try if you if you want to or if you feel like it's worth it, 
rope drop some of the heavy hitter attractions that Kara was talking about earlier. So you don't have to pay extra to ride those. And y'all know, if you've been listening to this podcast, Kara is our rope dropper. Like she knows when to be there, uh, what time the buses run. Like she's so educated and she is a park hopper. I'm not a, a park hopper, excuse me, a rope dropper, but I am not like, I really love to relax. I love to sleep in. And I, I truly loved being able to just wake up at six 30 in the morning and go ahead and make my genie plus selection and go ahead and pay for my heavy hitter rides. So I'm guaranteed to ride those rides skip the line, mind you, not have to wait forever. Um, And I was, it was just, it was such an easy process for me that after I did it, yes, the money was annoying. I don't want to pay to ride Rise of the Resistance. I don't, but it was so simple just to be like, boom, 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 and then lay my head back on the bed and fall back asleep until 8.30. And I'm just going to be honest, that's exactly what I did. Wow. Wow. 8.30 and we're not in the parks yet. What? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But it, it is nice that you wanted, you were able to like pick your own time and everything. Yes, exactly. And selecting your time. That's another thing too, that I really liked is you're able to just navigate and say like, I want to ride this around lunchtime or I want to ride that, you know, it just, ah, to me, it was worth it. I had, a re- we had a really great experience and it also wasn't, insanely busy because I know that's going to play a fat in a factor, right? When you're using Genie Plus, it's going to matter if the parks are insanely busy or if that's just regular busy, right? Because let's be honest, the parks are always busy. We just kind of like, we like narrow that down. Like it's insanely busy. It's Christmas time or it's just regular busy, but That's one of my tips, actually. That's one of my first tips that I'm going to say is to wake up early, select whatever you want to do. Make sure that you know exactly what you're going for at seven o'clock. Is that a good tip? I think that's a great tip. No, I think it is, especially for people that don't want that uh, rope dropping, like hustle and bustle. Waking up. Yeah, yeah. Get up, get your get your ride time and then go back to sleep. Yeah. And everyone is so different. Like relaxing is really important to me when I'm on vacation and not working. And this just played a really good part in, in my trip. So yeah. What do you have next? Ooh. Okay. So my next one, and I think I briefly said it a second ago, but it's wake up at six 30. And I realized that you can't make your selection until 7 AM. But what I did when I woke up at six 30 every morning is first, you have to make sure your, my Disney experience app or your MDE app is updated, right? Mm-hmm. Have you ever Kara, have you ever been trying to scroll through the app or look at wait times or do something and it just keeps glitching and it's not working and no pages are loading? Well, we know how the park's Wi-Fi is. I'm not sure I understand. <laughs> I, even Siri doesn't understand the park's Wi-Fi. Siri, you are not part of this episode, Siri. What are you doing? Sorry, my bad. That was my watch. Um, But right, so I would say that's the very first thing that you need to do is go ahead and update your app at 6.30 in the morning and go ahead and purchase Genie Plus if you didn't already purchase it the day that you made your reservation. Because if you don't know, it on when you make your vacation package, you can add Genie Plus onto that. But let's say you're like, no, I don't want to go ahead and add Genie Plus on when I book my reservation. Well, you have to wait until the day of. So even like the day before you're going to the parks, you can't go ahead and add Genie Plus. It has to be after midnight, right? On the day that you are going to the parks. That is the next opportunity you have to purchase Genie Plus, right? Yep. So go ahead at 630. You can do it before seven, but go ahead and purchase Genie Plus for your entire party that's willing to to do that. And I went with a bunch of girls um, at one point and it's just one person on one app, like go ahead and pay for everybody. And then we just Venmo that person. Yep. Yeah. So I it's do. not like, you know, we all have to get on our phones individually and purchase our own Genie Plus. We just let one person do that and make our selection. Okay. 
So right at seven o'clock, you're going to make your very first Genie Plus selection for, and I recommend the time slot that is closest to opening that you possibly can. So try to get it as early as possible because Kara mentioned earlier that the second you use it, you can grab another one. So you don't want your very first selection to be at five o'clock in the afternoon, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So try to make one as early as possible. Go ahead, Kara. No, I was saying you're, you're going to spend $15 at, uh, at world or 20 at land. Right. And it, you're not going to use that until five o'clock. Like, no, we're, let's, let's push that up a little bit. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So each morning at 7 a.m., you need to be prepared to know exactly what you're going for. Now, I some of these selections are going to sell out by the end of the day. So even though, for instance, Little Mermaid is a great attraction, one of our favorites, right? Mm-hmm. You do not want that to be your first GD Plus selection. And I'll tell you why. They will literally be available throughout that entire day within 30 minutes of the time you want to ride it. I promise you that even on a crazy busy day, but things like jungle cruise and test track and slinky dog, those are going to be completely sold out by the end of the day. So it's just smarter to make those selections early. That's going to sell out eventually. Am I making sense? No, you are. You are. That's Okay. It's it's all about, again, just being strategic and knowing what time, even what time of the day you want to go on what ride. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's strategic, guys. We have to listen. It's magical, but at the same time, we have to know what we're doing. So I have just some recommendations that I would do right at seven o'clock. So at the Magic Kingdom, go ahead and jump on Jungle Cruise. And I actually put these times in here because I wanted to preface how important important this is, right? So I booked Jungle Cruise right at seven o'clock for Magic Kingdom when it dropped. And at 7.02, the next available window for Jungle Cruise was at 6 p.m. At seven, two minutes after you could make the selection, that was the next available windows at 6 p.m. Isn't that insane? I don't have anything positive to say right now, girl. So you're gonna okay. have to skip over me. <laughs> That's fine. And Jungle Cruise, like that's, it's not our favorite attraction. Like it's not one of the ones like that we have to do, but I do want to ride it. And we were able to ride it. I think at like nine 30, right. When the parks opened at nine, because I jumped on it right at seven. Crazy. Well, so I have that first selection that you want to make for each park. So let's move over to Epcot. Test track is the one that we jumped on right at seven. We were able to ride it, I think, at 11. That was the slot that I was able to grab. But at 7.02, so two minutes after the drop, the next available window was 1 p.m. So imagine if you had to wait to 1 p.m. in Epcot. No. Crazy. No, you wouldn't do that. And so, and obviously some people are going to say, well, you should just, you shouldn't do test track. You should just rope drop test track. That's fair. That's a, that's a good, absolutely educated and very good choice. Again, just decide what's important for you and your family. Do you have a thought? No, I was going to say, we need like a meter over here on the YouTube of like how angry I get throughout this episode because like Casey's here and guys, I'm really trying to hold my comments until it's my turn, but there's, there's just so many things to say. Like, I just can't imagine a family, you know, a family of four, um, Casey and I both don't have any kids. We are proud dog dog moms, but we don't have any kids. So I can't imagine taking my family and potentially paying $15 a day for all these people and possibly not even getting on these rides still like, no, no. Nope. Yes. No. Okay. It's like this. Okay. That's yes. It's, it's, it's such a fair thing and we can't, I want to get, go ahead and give my other two recommendations for my other two parks, but we're not going to lie to you and say that this is the greatest thing ever. Like it's not for me. Oh, so go ahead. ahead. No, I was just gonna say for me and my husband, it was worth it, but it's, if you mess up, like it could potentially make or break your day. If you don't, if you oversleep, like what if you oversleep after seven and you can't ride jungle cruiser, you have to wait two hours for it. Like, I don't like how that is a make or break. Do you know what I'm saying? And also just like, again, families with um, kids or like with, with older parents and like things come up and your kid needs to go down for a nap yeah. and then you miss your hour window and possibly not able. Nope. 
I just, oh God. Okay. It's quite annoying. It's quite annoying. Well, we have two more parks in Disney World. I have recommendations to go ahead and grab early right when that seven o'clock drops, right? So at Hollywood Studios, I would recommend Slinky Dog. That's one of our family favorites anyway. But again, okay, this was the craziest one. Okay, at 702, two minutes before it dropped, the next available window was 710 in the afternoon in the app like the park closes at nine like that was the next window available for that ride and imagine if someone grabbed that 710 time and could not use their 15 dollars between opening and seven o'clock at night like the only the only way they could is because of that hour and 20 window so after yes that only other option yes but that is the first imagine but you're right imagine if people are selecting that 710 window at 702 no. Nope. All right, moving on I'm to that, um, oh, fast sorry. pass. No, I'm saying I'm not saying that fast pass was perfect. No, by any means. Um, but it was free if you are staying on property, and yeah. and you got three right at the beginning at a time. Yes, and you could do it sixty days in advance. Yes, and so there are you know pros and cons to everything. And I know some people are going to be like, well, Carrie, I want to be more flexible and blah, blah, blah. I get it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Please continue. I'm no, sorry. no. I No, I totally get it. It's one of those things. It's a make or break. And I loved making it 60 days out because once I wake up one time and make my selections, I don't have to think about it until I ride that ride. Mm-hmm. I don't have to think about it again. But this is every single morning you have to make your selection. Does that make sense? Yep. So, and my very last one, obviously, is Animal Kingdom. And the very first thing that you're jumping for is Safari because that will sell out. Now, um, I didn't go to Animal Kingdom this time. So I don't have like at 702, when was the next available window? But just from the research that I've done, Safari is going to be the one that's going to sell out quick. So that's the one that they recommend you jump on early. So all that makes sense. It does. A lot. And we're going to have to, you know, write this out for our followers and stuff, because it is a lot to, you know, get and information. And we all have different, um, you know, suggestions, but as Casey and I say all the time that your time is money at Disney and we are by no means rich (laughs) and (laughs) we are just trying to get the most out of our magical experiences. And and that comes with having to do Disney Genie Plus. Absolutely. It sure does. It's unfortunate, but we will do it. (laughs) We're going to do it every time. Um, So I have one last tip for you or something to keep in mind. And this is something that I think is super annoying, but you cannot modify a Genie Plus reservation. So um, you know how when you have a dining reservation and it's for three o'clock, you can modify that and try to see if there's any other available times that you're looking for, right? And you don't have to cancel your current dining reservation to try to find another one. You can modify. Well, Genie Plus reservation, they've got to make an update to this because it is extremely frustrating that you have to cancel your current Genie Plus reservation. And then in hopes that when you refresh your tip board, your screen, that that a time that you wanted is still available. And it happened to us a couple of times where I saw a better time and I canceled it really quick and tried to go back and refresh and the time that was there was gone. Yeah. They've got to make an update to that. I don't understand how you could do it with dining reservations, but you can't do it with a genie plus selection. You should just be able to modify it, not cancel it and try to book another one. Does that make sense? Especially since we're paying for it. <laughs> Thank you, Kara, for the people in the back. Thank you. Though it's exactly right. If we could do it for the free version, for fast pass where you we could, could modify your time, you could. you could be able to do it for the paid version. That's my tips. How do we feel about my tips? I mean, I really appreciate the the light that you brought to Walt Disney World, and um, I think you just bring such you know a positive attitude towards it, and like what you could really get. No, I, I know we all know in the negative yes. group, but no. <laughs> No, like you, you bring light and how people could really like maximize their time and, and giving good suggestions on what to rope drop 
and what to get as your first selection, which are two different things. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Kara, I want to hear some of your tips and tricks. I obviously want to hear about your whole Disneyland trip, but I'll settle for some tips and tricks on Genie Plus. I'll settle. Okay. I'll settle. It's okay. No, we're we're still going to debrief on it. No worries there. (laughs) But yes, as you guys all know and heard, I got to use my Disney Genie Plus experience for the first time at Disneyland rather than Disney World, which is just like a a huge, crazy thing. And, um, you know, Casey brought up some very uh, things that tips that go for both parks you know, rope drop a bigger attraction so you don't have to pay for it or that rope drop something you really like so you can go on it again. Right. I also want to put that out there. Yeah. Um, and what, I can't, let me, let me find my notes here. Um, the one thing that I did want to mention that is different. So at Disneyland, again, we know that it's the $20 a day versus the 15. And if you don't purchase when you get your ticket package, you can't purchase it until you physically scan into the park. Wait, what? Okay. I didn't know that. That's brand new information. Yes. So I called, um, I was going to work with Hannah, but like, I was like, let me not bother her. So I actually called Disneyland and I was like, Hey, can I add on Disney genie to my package? And they were like, no, you can't do it until you scan in. And I was like, oh, okay. So like on my first day, like, is it six, is it 7 a.m.? What? And they were like, no, when you physically scan into the park, the anxiety in my chest. I have a question though. So what if you say did purchase it prior? Do you know what I'm saying? Could you, do you still have to scan in first before you can make your first selection? I think so. My apologies for not knowing that exact answer, but I think you still have to scan in first. Wow. And so it was interesting because, you know, I'm in my little pink dress with my ears and I walk into Disneyland for the first time and I can't even look up at the train station because I'm down at my phone trying to get Disney Genie. That's frustrating. Yeah. And I was like, this is something else. And of course they hand me the ticket and I'm not used to getting a ticket. And I was like, oh my God, all the things and do and do the all the all for the party. So that is a, a big difference there between the two parks. Um, that I had to wait until I scanned in, not only to make my selection, but to actually buy the platform. So So, not even to make your selection. That's what gets me. Like Mm -hmm. you had to first, not waste time, but you had essentially, I mean, I'll just say it, waste time. Yeah. Buying Genie Plus, putting Mm -hmm. in your card. I'm sure you have your card in your app, but like putting in that information, checking out, and then being able to make your first selection. Considering what I said too, about like at 7.02, the next available windows were in the afternoon. Of course. And we rope dropped the parks, but it Uh, would be a a solid 20, 25 minutes before, you know, the first person gets in through the gate and before I do. And so I was like, this is so unfair. (laughs) Like their Uber just got here before mine. (laughs) Right. Yeah. So I was a little, a little, ups, a little, a lot upset about that, but that is a difference that you need to know if you're going to Disneyland versus Walt Disney world. Um, my second thing, and, and this is what we've been saying throughout the whole podcast is just be knowledgeable. We understand there are, um, people out there that are able to go with the flow. Yeah. And we're saying be knowledgeable more so for the people that can't get there as often and don't understand the, um, not don't understand, but aren't up to date with all the changes and and opportunities that you can have in the park. If you are a magic key holder or an annual pass holder and you go all the time, by all means, don't even get it if you don't want to. But the the be knowledgeable comment is really for those that want to make the most out of their trip, want to really asterisk here, ride all the rides. Right. If you are a big ride person and your family wants to do it all, this is definitely something for you. Like if your family is more there, you know, for the beach club and y'all just want to relax and maybe go on a ride here and there. Sure. Like, don't be as stressed about it. But for me, when I can only go once, maybe twice a year, um, and I want to hit all those rides and have the magical and happy time, I'm stressed. I need to get my selections in. So, um, that is definitely something to consider Mm -hmm. to Disney world and land. And then 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. Yes. Every t- yes to everything you just said. Yes. <laughs> uh, I'm just trying to think of everything. Um, 
I wrote some like, you know, sketch notes in here in our script. And I did do Disney Genie, both at Disneyland and DCA. Mm -hmm. Um, And I will say that when we went to DCA, we were able to use Lightning Lane for a majority of the things minus Soren that was like down the whole time. And, but the Lightning Lanes over at DCA are Web Slingers and Radiator Springs. So we actually rope dropped Web Slingers. So then we also purchased the lightning lane for it later. So we were able to ride it twice because that ride was super important to us. Mm -hmm. So we got the upgraded after the $20, we got the upgraded lightning lane, which radiator springs and web slingers were both $7. Wow. And I thought they were both going to be 20. So absolutely. Maybe it was the time of year, early February. I don't know. The crowd seemed pretty normal to me, a little lower, but like still normal. And it was only $7. I was like, uh, okay. Rise the whole. I would think like, that's a glitch. I'd be like, something's wrong. (laughs) That's why I think that. And I, I, I wanted to, because I was like, what if it's inflation? What if a lot of people were buying it and it goes up throughout the day? And I was like, yeah. I need to get it right at the, right at the beginning. <laughs> um, so we were able to get it on our, our second Disneyland day. We did, we didn't, um, get the lightning lane for rise, but we did rope drop it because yes. on top of the $20 I was spending for Disney genie, I was not going to spend another $20 to go on rise. Right. So you rope dropped instead. We rope dropped it instead. Wow. Do you remember what your first selections were? Not for like the individual ride selection, but for your first Genie Plus selection, whatever was included in your $20 a day. Do you remember? Yes. Um, I do remember. And I normally start my day off with Space Mountain. Yes. And Space Mountain is like my always right now. I went with my best friend, Brandon. And for those of you that don't know, he loves Toy Story and specifically Buzz Lightyear. So we actually went on Astro Blasters first. I'm like okay. going through my little highlights on my Instagram page. We <laughs> did Astro Blasters first and then Rise of the Resistance. I always love starting off my um, Magic Kingdom day at Tomorrowland. Tomorrowland's my favorite land. It's a tradition. You have yeah. to. <laughs> it is, it is one of our Disney traditions. Um, and just kind of speaking on that and speaking about Tomorrowland, I wanted to bring something to light and almost ask you, Casey, mm-hmm. when we were at Disneyland, we were going through and we we're like, okay, okay. Oh, we were like, oh, um, Pinocchio doesn't have a lightning lane. That's weird. Okay. We'll get in standby, blah, blah, blah. Oh, teacups doesn't have a lightning lane. <laughs> Go over. The majority of the Fantasyland rides did not have Lightning Lane. Really? Like Snow White, Pinocchio, Storybook, Land Boats, um, Tea Party. Almost all of them in Fantasyland didn't have Lightning Lanes. And they were our, our longest wait the whole trip was, I think, 30, 35 minutes. And it was for Peter Pan because it didn't have a Lightning Lane. Yeah. Okay. That's odd. So I was like, really, we really had to plan it our second day. So if you guys don't know, I did two days in Disneyland, one in DCA and our second day at Disneyland, we like really had to prioritize the fantasy land rides because they weren't even offered on the Disney genie and uh, there's no lightning lane thing for them. But why? I don't know. And I feel like I've never seen that like in my research before. And that's something that I really wanted to say on the podcast. And I'm, I'm glad I remember because I didn't write it down. Right. Um, but yeah, if you're going to Disneyland and, and you are like a dark ride fanatic and you know that you're with little kids and you want to be in fantasy land or you just are a fantasy land fan and you want to be in fantasy land, Disney Genie might not be for you because they're, they're not on it. Which is crazy to me. And you said like, so if they weren't on it, did you have to wait like an insanely long amount of time for those that didn't, that weren't included or that didn't have a lightning lane? Again, Peter Pan was our longest one at like 30 minutes. 30 minutes. That's not bad though. But it's not bad, but I was just frustrated. Yeah. I was like, I paid $20 for this and these rides aren't even on here. 
I would love to see, and I'm going to, as soon as we're done recording today, I'm going to Google it, but I want to see the list of all the rides in Disneyland that are included in Genie Plus, because I don't know why I feel like there, it's not a ton because so many of those are out. And you know what? Our friend, um, Amanda over at AZ to Disneyland, and we have to share this on our page when this episode comes out, she has a great Disney Genie Plus questions answered, like you guys can see it, questions answered slide. Um, and at Disneyland, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, two, three, four, five, eight, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve that are in um Disney Genie and then Rise is like the the lightning lane. So yes. So there's a lot more than 12 rides there. Whoa. I did not really put two and two together. So wow. I would not have put two and two together. The only one that didn't have a um lightning lane in Disney World that I noticed mm-hmm. was the three habaneros. And we've always talked about how, like, why are you not in the fast pass system? Like we've always, haven't we always said that? Well, they are not, they don't have a a lightning lane. And that was the only one that I noticed, but it might've been more like, whoa. Okay. Brand new information. Again, I feel like (laughs) we should flash something on the screen, like breaking news, brand new information. And I did because a lot of people, especially with little kids, they spend a lot of their time in fantasy land because those are some of the classic rides and they did not have it on the system. Well, especially if you have shorter kids too, that have to ride like the smaller fantasy land rides. Wow. Kara, I'm so glad you brought that up. Yeah. Thanks. Mm. I I know like our listeners are just going to have again, like that, that's just one comment. And they probably are coming up with a whole list of questions, right. That they could be asking us, Casey, could you start us off with some Disney genie plus questions? Oh, Q and a, okay. So let's talk about some of the common questions that come up about genie plus, right? So one of the ones is, and I've heard this actually a lot is genie plus worth it for every park. Now we're going to talk about Disney world and Disney land as well, but in my opinion, the only one in Disney world that's not worth it is animal kingdom. Kara has stressed this before that they just simply don't have enough rides. And I don't know if you know, Kara, but right now, currently when we're recording this episode, Everest is actually closed down until April. Or April. Or is it the end of March? All I know is that my family and I'll be there at the end of March and it will not be open. So so one less ride on the already small list of rides in Animal Kingdom. I just truly think that that's a half day park that you can get through the entire day as far as attractions. Now shows are obviously a little different. So in my opinion, Animal Kingdom for Disney World is not worth it for Genie Plus. It's just, there's not enough. You know what I mean? What would you say for Disneyland or even Disney world? I'm going to say this for both parks is if you have to ask that question, it's simply because maybe you don't know enough about the parks or how it could run or what it could do for your family. So please reach out to us, reach out to Hannah or travel agent or Haley, one of our travel agent friends. Um, and they can, guide you specifically for you and your family, right? Um, because I can answer that for the way that I vacation, but everyone, as we said, is different. So I don't want to say this. Is it worth it? It is worth it. And it's not for different people. I agree. It's different for every family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of our first one is yes and no. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, we, we will answer that question for you, but it comes with a couple preempt questions. It does. It comes with conditions for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, it absolutely does. So let's move on to the next question we're going to talk about. So how accurate are the Disney genie recommendations? So not genie plus. So this is on like your, my genie day or no, the tip board, I guess you Mm -hmm. can look at on both sides on both tabs, I guess. Um, is the recommendations accurate? Kara, did you do this in Disneyland? Um, like seeing if they were actually accurate. Yeah. Like it, like things that you should do in between your genie plus selections. I, 
I was so stressed about having to go back and forth between the tabs that like I stayed on the tip board for the majority of the time. Like I tried to check out the shows, what they were recommending to eat, but not really. I really, for some reason, I paid really, really close attention when Daniel and I were in Disney World last time about what it was recommending that we do. And a lot of the recommendations just didn't make sense at all. Like we would be... We would be in Tomorrowland and it's recommending that we go see a show all the way like on the other side of the park and we have a dining reservation in 20 minutes uh, in Tomorrowland or something, you know, like a lot of the recommendations just didn't make a whole lot of sense. And it was, (laughs) there was at one point in Hollywood studios where after we already rode Mickey and Minnie's. Um, it recommended that we do it again. And it was right after we did it. Like it was odd. Like some of the things just doesn't make sense. Now there were some shows and things that like, especially in Epcot that I forget about. And that was beneficial to see those on the tip board because I'm like, oh my gosh, I haven't seen that beauty and the beast show in France in forever. Like I need to see that show. So, I mean, To me, like overall, I think that you should do your research and like Kara said, know your family, know what is important to you guys, but don't just trust it throughout the entire day. Does that make sense? And I will say there's nothing better than a person. I know like computers and robots are taking over now, but like there are so many people like myself or Mm -hmm. or your travel agents that will literally just text you and message you and be like, hey, just check out this show. And it, it's a little bit more accurate, like knowing the individual, knowing the person than the AI assistance that's trying to figure out what you want out of your vacation. Absolutely. And I would also say to really utilize cast members. Like if you ask someone, uh, hey, is it smart to go watch the Jamboree Bears when I have a lightning lane for Space Mountain in 10 minutes? They'll probably say no, because it's on the other side of the park and you need to yep. be there in 10 minutes. You know what yep. I mean? Mm-hmm. And I mean, speaking with traveling and, and having to get from place to place, Casey, you talk about park hopping all the time. So like, how does it work with park hopping? Yes, absolutely. So you definitely can use Genie Plus and park hop. Now, keep in mind in Disney World, um, you can't park hop until two o'clock. So obviously you're not going to make a if you're at Epcot, you're not going to make a Magic Kingdom um, Genie Plus selection at one o'clock or one thirty. Like you're going to make sure to try to do those after two. But it's such a simple change, and I thought it was going to be this long, complicated process. But you just change your park in the tip board. It'll say change park, and then you put in wherever you're going, and then the rest of the board will say everything or every lightning lane that's available in the park that you're going to. So it's a really simple thing. It's not crazy complicated like I assumed it would be. Um, It's just the matter of changing parks and then selecting what's available in that park. Make sure you do it after two. And it, and by the way, I think this is a glitch, but it will let you make a selection for earlier, even if that's not the park that you have a reservation at. So I could have easily on my Epcot day made a 10 o'clock a.m. reservation for something in Animal Kingdom if I wanted to. Like the system doesn't block you from that, oddly enough. Wow. Isn't that weird? Weird. Again, be mindful. Know what you want to jump for. Keep in mind, Jungle Cruise might be sold out if you're hopping to Magic Kingdom. That's all I want to say. Sure. <laughs> For sure. So our next question up is what rides are not included in Genie Plus? Kara talked earlier about how, you know, there are some attractions that are not included in your $15 per person per day. We want you guys to be prepared. Don't wake up at seven o'clock and try to jump on Mickey and Minnie's and be like, well, if we if we select it early, then we don't have to pay for it. No, that's not that's not an attraction that's included in Genie Plus right? So let's talk. What is, so Kara, what's available and what's not available for each park, right? So what I'm going to do is give a list of what's on that additional 
lightning lane, because as we discussed three caballeros over at Epcot is not on the system A majority of uh, fantasy land rides are not on this system. But what I, what we're going to talk about are the additional charges. So if you want to ride seven dwarfs mine train or space mountain, those are not included and they will come at an additional charge. If you want to skip, and this is all, if you want to skip the line, by all means, stand by stand line, go, go ahead waste your time. It's fine. It's okay. Not waste your time, but like I, time is money. I I got things to do. Absolutely. (laughs) So over in animal kingdom, Everest, unfortunately it's down right now. And of course, flight of passage are those additional charges. Hollywood studios. Um, we have rise of the resistance and Mickey and and minis. Now we did hear that this was moving to the genie plus option. Mm -hmm. That's what I heard. I know we had to pay for it last time we were there, which is a few weeks ago, but that's what I heard. See, I, that doesn't make any sense to me because they're not getting a new ride. Epcot and Magic Kingdom are getting new rides. Hmm. So I, I would- wonder if they're going to replace Mickey and Minnie's with whatever sells out the fastest that is included in Genie Plus, like Slinky Dog. Hmm. I don't know. Well, then to finish Walt Disney World at Epcot, Remy's, Ratatouille, and Frozen are those additional charges. Over at Disneyland, you just have Rise. Mm -hmm. And at DCA, it's Radiator Springs Racers, which I love much more than Test Track, by the way. Wow. A hundred percent more. And um, of course, Web Slingers. Of course. It's a brand new ride and it's a huge thing right now. Yeah. So, um, and apparently like Ashley said last week, Adventures Campus is where Bugs Land was. Didn't know that. (laughs) Brand new information. (laughs) That is good. And I think, and like I said earlier, if you're going to DCA that day and you're trying to wake up to grab web slingers for Genie Plus, it's not going to be an option. You're going to have to pay extra and you're going to think, oh, but I paid $20. Yeah. It's not included. Sorry. You don't care. (laughs) <laughs> they don't care <laughs> oh they don't. but yeah like you, you got to think about those lightning lanes you got to think about those return times and and things do come up uh, you know you could be hurting your feet my feet were hurting at Disneyland um you know there could be unfortunately an accident um you put your dining reservation could go longer and you might miss your lightning lane return time so Casey what do you do if that were to happen if, if I got a four o'clock lightning lane right you have that hour so it's four to five but you don't get there till 505 Mm -hmm. what's what's gonna happen yes absolutely so um you do so and i believe fast pass used to be like this as well but you got five minutes before your window and then you got five minutes after um and you don't have to say anything to the cast member if you're five minutes late just hurry up and scan in and it's no problem it'll turn green for you and so that is still the current process with lightning lane now so you get five minutes before and five minutes after but let's say like kara said your reservation runs long things happen that's it's a thing my daughter had to go down for a nap it's a thing You, I would just say, this is my recommendation, be super polite and ask the cast member. I know like human interaction is hard for us sometimes because there's texting and there's tweeting and there's all these things. Robots do it for us, but talk with the cast member, be super polite. And I know that I spoke with someone at Disney World when I was there a few weeks ago and they were two hours late, two hours late. For their lightning lane and the cast member was able to let them go do it whenever they shown up so I don't know if that is the case always but just be super polite we always recommend that to our small shop owners that sponsor the podcast be super polite you know and I think it goes a long way would you agree I mean I would say yes and for some reason if they can't get you on the ride please don't cuss them out like I, I understand that y'all spent the money, but they did not shoot up. I'm pretty sure a lot of them want fast passes back. So please do not be upset with them. This was not their decision. It's just, they're the person relaying the message. So don't be mad. Right. Absolutely. I also think it depends on how busy that attraction is at that moment. They might tell you to come back in an hour. Like it might be less busy in an hour, you know, yeah. that, they're normally really helpful. One of the um, questions, Kara, that I 
forgot to put in here, but I think was really useful is what if you have a window, you have your one hour window and that attraction is closed down during that one hour window. I completely, I think that's really important. Yeah. This did that happen to you? It almost happened to us. Okay. Um, but what, what's going to happen is you can go up to the cast member and they're probably going to give you, I remember what it was when it was fast pass, something on your app where you can then use that on a different attraction or that same attraction later in the day. Like they are going to make up for it. It's obviously not your fault that you picked that time and the ride went down rise goes is rise goes down all the time. So they are used to this procedure. They will have something for you. Like, honestly, just don't panic. Just go up, ask them what's going on. And and for the most part, you're probably just going to be in a line of people and they're just going to scan your cards or whatever it is. Yeah, exactly. And you'll get like, I don't even, I, like you said, I don't know what it's called, but it's just like this, this GD plus selection. That's like all of the attractions and the cast member will let you know, like, Hey, you can't use it on, you know, space mountain or, you know, and you just either go do another one or you come back later and do pirates was what was shut down for us. So we had to come back later and do that one. But yeah, it's really good. I think this was a great episode, Kara. I think it was too. And I really hope our listeners and watchers get a lot out of it and just, you know, understand that this is a conversation and we are in by no means the the passer-ons of, of Disney and we do not make the decisions. If, if I did fast passes would be back <laughs> yesterday. Um, but we really just want the most out of your vacation and, and how help you have the most magical trip. So. Absolutely. Yeah. And if you guys have any more questions, please let us know, DM our Instagram. And we're happy to, if you had a question when we were talking and you're like, gosh, I really wish they would have said that let us know dm our instagram or you can send us an email and i think our email is why we disney at gmail.com but absolutely yeah well guys this has been fun we hope you got a lot of information out of disney genie plus that plus is important if you need a refresher go back and watch episode 48 on the original disney genie but until then make sure to follow us on instagram facebook tiktok subscribe to our newsletter and honestly just be our friends be our homies and um be a part of the most magical podcast on the internet we will see you next wednesday until then bye bye